Kabrosen! Oh, good play. Oh, oh yeah, Justin. So that does it for the Pittsburgh Steelers day 13 of training camp and the Steelers final practice before their very first preseason game against the Houston Texans tomorrow. And in this practice, even though Russell Wilson took most of the first team reps, you look at Justin Fields and he continues to be a playmaker not only with his arm, but also his legs as well. He's a dual threat quarterback and he's been showing it all camp with both his arm, throwing passes, putting his zip on the ball, his deep ball, but also running it in for touchdowns and uses his legs to scramble. And it allows the Pittsburgh Steelers to be very versatile on offense with their play calling because the defenses have to be worried both about his arm but also his legs as well, because that's really when he gets dangerous. And in this practice, as you see, in the very first clip, Justin Fields hitting Kelvin Austin in stride down the field. Even though the defenders and Kelvin Austin himself weren't going full go, it's really good to see Justin Fields have perfect ball placement deep down the sideline, throwing a dart to Kelvin Austin. And that's what he's been doing all camp especially with the deep balls. Underneath stuff, sometimes he struggles with that, taking less a zip off the ball. He throws it too fast. He may overthrow someone underneath. But deep balls, that has been perfection for him this training camp. Whether it's a Van Jefferson, whether it's George Pickens, whether it's Kelvin Austin, he's getting the job done and he's really showing out, being able to hit the receiver in stride and not have to make them slow down towards the defender in which the defender can break away the pass, pass defense. There he's hitting them in stride, which leads to big gains, and he hit Kelvin Austin for a touchdown this training camp day 13. But also in the second clip, you see a different type of play call, something the Steelers really don't usually do, a read option. When have the Steelers really done a read option play the last few years? Or the last decade plus. Not that much. With Ben Roethlisberger, barely. With Kenny Pickett, barely. So, with Justin Fields, at least Arthur Smith is able to call a read option play. Because he's very athletic. And the defenders, they have to be worried about his legs. So, he's either able to hand it off or run it in. And he's really good at making the decision whether to keep the ball or not to keep the ball. With Russell Wilson... They're more than likely not going to do the read option type of play because what is he like 37 years old? He's getting up there in age as well. He's not the running quarterback he used to be. So Justin Fields brings something new to this offense when he is in there that the defenses have to be worried about. So it allows the offense coordinator to call something different. It allows him to be versatile and the Steelers to have different type of play calls when he's in the game because he can run the football with the best of them. He is beside Lamar Jackson, those two go hand-in-hand -hand as the best running quarterbacks in the league today and some of the best running back, running quarterbacks in the league in NFL history. So you look at Justin Fields getting over a 1,000 yards with his legs and getting, what, 3,000 yards with his arm the last few seasons. So he's able to get the job done and he's showing his versatility in the Steelers practice all throughout camp, not just today. But anyway, enough with that. Enough with this training camp because it's only two clips. So let's talk about some moves the Pittsburgh Steelers made on their roster the last few days. So the Steelers have signed linebacker Easton Gibbs and waived injured linebacker Tyler Murray. So just to kind of give you an update on that and an update on the Pittsburgh Steelers newest signing. Gibbs spent three months with the Seahawks before being placed on the active non-football injury or illness list on July 18th, and then he was released on July 30th. It's unclear why he was on the NFI to open Seahawks training camp, but he eventually passed his physical on July 25th, and he was activated before being let go five days later. 
looking at Gibbs, he played college football at Wyoming, where he appeared in 45 games. He recorded 358 tackles, 181 of them being solo stops. He also had 22 tackles for a loss and 7 sacks. He also had 11 pass defense, 3 forced fumbles, and 2 fumbles recoveries. So, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they've signed Gibbs to this roster. He more than likely will not make the team. He's added way too late into training camp. He will play in preseason more than likely as just a depth piece. When the game gets late and you don't want the starters, you don't want the backups in there, he will get some playing time more than likely. So he will have a chance to show out, even if it's against third team, fourth team, whatever. He'll still have a chance to show out, maybe make this practice squad, or just show out for a different team and earn a spot on a different team if they like how he plays. So he will not make this final roster, but at least he's given a chance to show what he could do in practice and in preseason. So another move the Pittsburgh Steelers have made is they brought back Jalen Elliott. The Steelers signed defense back Jalen Elliott, and he was with the Steelers last year in training camp and spent time on the practice squad during the season. He was also with the team this offseason as well, before being let go earlier, like uh, earlier in the month or last month or something like that. So you look at Elliott, and he originally signed with Detroit Lions as an undrafted rookie in free agency following the 2020 NFL draft out of Notre Dame. He spent his rookie season on the Lions practice squad and it was then elevated to the active roster for two games, later signed to the 53-man roster. He played a total of eight games in his career at the NFL level. He only started one of them. Elliott signed with the New England Patriots during training camp of 2022. He then played in a preseason game, but then was released prior to the start of the regular season, did not make the 53-man roster. Elliott also spent time with Las Vegas Raiders and then... Just looking at Elliott as a college player, he played in 51 games for Notre Dame, recording 173 tackles, 96 solo stops, 6 interceptions, and a forced fumble. So, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they signed him back, but then they also signed Gibbs as well. And corresponding moves, like I've said, they've waived injured inside linebacker Tyler Murray, but then they've also waived injured player Nate Meters as well. For the signing of Jalen Elliott. So they signed two new players. In the last two new day, two days. But then they've also released. And waived injured players as well. The last two days as well. More than likely if those people pass through waivers. Which they more than likely will. They'll revert to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Kind of injured reserve list or whatever. So the Pittsburgh Steelers more than likely. Will get them back on the roster. As the like injured player. So these are the moves the Pittsburgh Steelers have made. Before the preseason first preseason game tomorrow that's gonna be very exciting to see what the reps in practice to do and how it translates to the very first preseason game especially with all the new players and rookies on this team just to kind of recap the Elliott signing he signed with the Steelers so many times got cut from the Steelers so many times that he basically has no chance of making this roster if they feel as though he's that expendable he could still make this practice squad who knows but this roster, he's been cut way too many times to make the final roster. Tomorrow, I'll be making a video covering this game in general. Who's in, who's out, because Mike Tomlin already did list who won't be playing in this game. So I'll go through that tomorrow. Justin Fields will see a lot of time. That's all I'm going to say, because Russell Wilson will be out. But anyway, enough with that. Let me know your thoughts on the comments below about this practice, about Justin Fields, his versatility, and if you think he could get it done with both his arm and his leg at a very high level for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Also, let me know your thoughts about the signings of Elliott being back on the team, but also the signing of Gibbs as well at the linebacker position. Do you think they have any chance of making this final roster of 53? Or do you think, like I think, they're more than they're just practice squad players or more just camp of bodies to play in the preseason? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And also, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications for everything Pittsburgh Steelers news, updates, highlights, analysis, everything like that. I covered it all this offseason. I'll continue to cover it all as we get into the season. And this is just the best spot for everything Pittsburgh Steelers. Especially if you want to watch it, listen to it, and not have to read Steelers news. So, with that being said, like, comment, and subscribe. 
turn on notifications for this channel so you never miss out on anything. And until the next video tomorrow, I'll see you guys all later. I'm out. Peace.